okay, mm, I'm Kai, and this is my first slide. I'm doing the first, the first one. So here we go. So our group presenting Monroe C. Beardsley. He is a philosopher of art. And the next slide. The first one, Monroe C. Beardsley, say that defends the primacy of the artist art making attention. You can see that for him an artwork is depend on the artist's attention what he or she is fashioning it or create that satisfy an aesthetic interest. So it's not about just an artwork, it's about a person that paint that draw the artwork is come from the person itself so we go to the next one um, Monroe C. Birdsley he mentioned about art and aesthetic interest or emotion and for this I want to say that his position is to make the artist's attention to satisfy an aesthetic interest within the artist which means what the artists tend to do and what is the artist want to you know deliver to the audience is all based on the artist so when they paint or draw something on the canvas or whatsoever like on the wall you know it's come within the artist so the next slide um, view appeal as common sense so I got two here. First one emphasize the importance of the artist and the second one the artist call in creating the artwork. So I will uh, elaborate just a little bit about this. Uh, drawing been categorized by two which first satisfy our aesthetic interest and second been made with purpose in mind first one emphasize the importance of artists is all about the artist it doesn't care about the artwork it's about the artist how you know the word the value of an artist itself the person and the second one the artist called in creating the artwork what she try to do or you know try to bring out from the artwork after that they got two categories which is aesthetic interest and purpose in mind I will you know try to talk more about this two categories aesthetic interest and purpose in mind if you can see it on your mind you can hold it on your hand Bradley try to do such thing that's why you got aesthetic interest and purpose in mind so uh, after that um, talk about Presley argument in defying art. You know, Presley try to defend the definition of an art. He always in argument because everyone have their own perspective, his own opinion, dogma, and so on. So for Presley, he come out with three things that he argue about: the word reviewing, funding agency and project word of money. Presley begins to argue by clarifying why it is important to define art, you know, define an art. He tried to define art or argue with it. He said art can put to many users, especially when tried to critic and needs to decide what reviewing funding agency which project our world of grand money you now according to Presley without an indicate or proper definition it would be impossible uh, which means hard to make such decision rationally so you're gonna think about this tree so next I'm gonna talk about anthropologists and anthropologists deciding an activity set a priority and give a concept which is for those who require a definition of art, deciding uh, which activity to count as artistic, which which one like okay look more artistic like that, some kind like that. 
Uh, after that, give a pair of concept, artwork, and artistic activity, and it set a priority which thing you should done or not done. This also can develop discipline broad cross cultural and orientation. We go the next slide. The differences. I say I mentioned before about the uh, Brisley always arguing because he got his own mind for Danto and Plato they say you need to begin with the artwork itself so it's all about the artwork not because of the artist Bird Slay he argued that more to concept of artistic to search for a definition like you know definition of an art and then the artist itself so, uh, two aspect uh, the reason is that artistic production got two clearly defined aspect like two the first one the productive activity itself and the second one its reception artwork not just something that been produced it is also something received or appreciated by an audience so it's like it's not something you create and you feel for yourself but you should make audience feel it too last but not least you know monroe c Bradsley say about the basic structure for Bradsley definition of art it's come from his name so yeah Bradsley definition of art an artwork is something produced with the intention of giving it the capacity to satisfy the aesthetic interest it's all about come from you because you produce it yeah but it's actually uh, important for both role you know the producer and receiver of the artwork because you know this this definition being tied or central to uh, the great thing of life are simple dynamic and creative so you know they will produce well-being and happiness Okay, so hi, I'm Omi. I'm going to talk about Monroe Bursley. So here is a little bit information about him. Bursley was born and raised in Bridgeport and educated at Yale University where he received the George Edison Porter Prize. Um, his artwork uh, in aesthetics is best known for its championing of the instrumentalist theory of art and the concept of aesthetic experience. Um, he and his wife were overall series editors for Prentice Hall's Foundations of Philosophy, a series of textbooks on different fields within philosophy, written in most cases by leading scholars in those fields. So next, um, I'm going to talk um, about a chapter 20, page 229, part 1. It should not be necessary to argue that we have need for a definition of art, but since this has been vigorously denied, some argument must be given. The point of a definition is, of course, to fix a meaning, to establish and stabilize it for some range of context, and to mark out a class of thing to be referred to by some group of people. One would think the philosopher of art could use a definition since he should be curious to know what he is philosophizing about. He only needs some uncontested examples of art which are surely not hard to come by but at some point he will want to say why these are examples of art and how we are to tell what further things he Philosophical conclusions are supposed to apply too. Um, so, should the dance historian deal with parrots and with cavalry bears? Should the architecture historian deal with um, Adlers and McDonald's catries? If so, why? And if not, why not? To answer such question will require a, a defensible definition. Okay, so next is um okay, we must especially especially note the needs of the anthropologists and 
Indeed, as we move on, we should keep in mind this broad cross-cultural perspective. Essential to our understanding of any culture is the gaps of the various forms of activity that is, is manifest and of distinction that are most significant to the members of the society that has that culture. When we observe someone carving wood or moving about in a circle with others, we must ask whether the activity is religious, political, economic, medical, or artistic. Even when the same act of carving um, or dancing in a ring has more than one character, it is both religious and artistic, say we don't understand it unless we make this distinction and see that both description apply. Um, so here say distinction does not interspiration and it is the distinction that is basic to of course it may also be important to note that in one society these two forms of activity are always combined while in another society they are kept apart and assigned to spe specialized person. Next is um, there are two definition questions that spring up when we take this anthropological point of view. We may, as I say, observe activity and want to know which activities are artistic one. We may notice certain objects that seem to engage the attention of many persons in the society from time to time and want to know which of them, if any, um, are ours. So here are two pair concepts that of artistic activity and that of artwork. And already we are faced with one of the definitional sorry definitional decisions we must make. It will have if we have an independent definition of artwork, it is easy to define artistic activity as activity that involves dealing with artworks. But it may turn out to be impossible of inconvenience to give a satisfactory definition of artwork without making reference to some form of artistic activity, either on the part of those who create artworks or those who receive them, or both. So um, that's all for me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Izuang. I would like to present Chapter 2. So, in this chapter, what I know is art making or art creating is equal to art production. So, what is produced? What I know that uh, it says that is use our own body as opposed to the mind and feelings to build something with meanings, message or emotions. This we can see it at um, page 231, line 7. So, how to differentiate specific of art production and specific of intention? This can be found at line 16. The a definition of artistic activity or production can focus on any of three things. The first one is mode of production. This probably can't help us since the same mode of production that makes a religious object can make an artwork since sometimes they are one and the same thing. Second is intentions that guide the production. Because the same behavior can be informed by multiple intentions, this will help us to deal with objects that betray both religious and artistic intentions. Third is results. But this means that intentions must succeed and that will get us into trouble. Instead of saying that few attempts are bad art, we will have to say that they are not art at all. So second, that is intention that guide the production is our best bet and we must ask that share intention is reflected in sculpture, music or literature. It appears to be an intention to produce something which engage receptive interaction. The interaction is marked by some, some or all of the following, such as this fall. Okay, page 232. The sentence an artwork is an object produced with the intention of giving it the capacity to satisfy the aesthetic 
interest. So what I know is, once a person are old enough to form this intention, that person can produce art. The only way to fail to make art when proceeding with this intention is to fail entirely in doing what you set out to do. Although intentions are private, they involve two things. A desire to do a certain thing and a belief that one can actually do that thing through the selected behavior. Okay, next, um, satisfaction. Page 233, line 3. Uh, what I know in the meaning of satisfaction is while creating an artwork, the artist or a person can reach their achievement or satisfaction that their heart always really wants to create. Next, same page, uh, second paragraph, intention combination of desire and belief. So, Bitsley's two requirements for the intention of art are first, desire, which involves desiring to produce such a work, and second, belief, which involves believing that one will produce such a work. Sometimes the meaning of an artwork does not necessarily depend on the artist's intent. But Bitsley uh, claims that art is either art or not from the beginning of its creation to the end of its existence. He claims this by saying, once an artwork, always an artwork. The fourth point, page 234, line 8. Okay, mm, Bitsley accept that things can be made with more than one intention, art being one of them. So, uh, I think that a religious object such as a Buddha sculpture can be put into an art room as art not because it is a religious object but because of its aesthetics intent in its production. So for an, for an example, is the Chum fountain which is a urina, that urina, yeah, art? Is it an art? The urina does not have the aesthetic intent because it was made strictly for a particular use, but the religious Buddha sculpture does have aesthetic intent as it and other objects. The last point, page 235, the second paragraph, line 2, um, producing art and kidding car, eh, kidding art, sorry. Okay, kidding art is a kind of message and when done well certainly does not disqualify the kidding object from being itself an artwork. So to classify them as artworks just because they are called art by those who are called artists because they make things they call art is not to classify at all but to think in circles. Please turn to the page 236 in chapter 20. So I will talk about the chap uh, part 3. So in the history of art, we will see some critics and arguments on the new race theory before it gets fully accepted by the people. Admit no exception, Monroe Beasley's definition on art meets some objection too. We are here to list down their critics. So the first one, basically define artworks as something produced that someone finds aesthetically enjoyable and shares with others who may appreciate it. So in the simple way we say, everyone can create art. All right. So this theory is unacceptable to those people who agree to whose definition of art was assigned to essential dependence on institution or aesthetic theories. So for example, it's George Dickey's institutional theory. So in chapter 19, so we learned this before. So this guy is George Dickey. So you can flip back to learn again, to read again about this theory, all right? Okay, next, 
we go to the second argument in the same page. So Bisley has no fixed answer for the verges of or counterparts of artworks can be the artwork or not. So he say this is not an artwork when a mechanical reproduction of an artwork, for example, is a picture sold in museum shop. So this is an artwork when a person make a forgery painting and make sure this is good enough as an original painting to fool a connoisseur. Hence, the forger is producing an artwork. So this statement is totally cannot be accepted and wisely critiqued by the art historians because they cannot accept the forgeries as a part in the art history. So basically do not admit that forgeries belong to the art history because they do not have any significance in the development of art. But he does admit the for Voger careful skill in imitation. So we turn to the next page, page 237. So once an artwork, always an artwork, Miss Lee says, art is an intention, which is what's produced. Nothing can be art from the start and nothing that is art can cease to be art. So people argue that argue that his statement is not true because sometimes non-art can be art object too. So for example, the postmodern artists like Michel, Marcel Touchamp combine bicycle wheels and chair to be an artwork. So I will show this. This is the picture of the artwork. So it's the totally the combination of bicycle wheel and and the chair. So to be from the non-art mean it mean the object to be the art piece. So this art piece is produced in 1913. All right. Number four. If it is in the intention that counts in art production, does it follow that one cannot fail to produce an artwork if one intends to? Basically say the aesthetic intention is not the intention to produce an artwork but the intention to produce something capable of satisfying the aesthetic interest the only way one can fail to produce an artwork after setting out to produce something capable of satisfying the aesthetic interest is by failing to make the physical object one tries to make so the last objection actually this is the uh, consequence of his aesthetic definition so the tawdry and negligible objects will be classified as of artworks too if someone only need the intention of giving the capacity but in low quality to satisfy the aesthetic interest so the blessedly say that he is only preserved a value neutral sense of artwork. So hence we need another terms to do to do the evaluate the artwork. So artworks is a very neutral. Artworks are not only good but many other things included both kind and unkind. In the conclusion is why Monroe basically want to define art? I think he only want to differentiate between art and non-art. He thinks everybody can create arts if he or she has an intention and successfully produce an art as their early intention. That's artwork. His definition is helped art critics, patrons, art historians as a guideline to design which art is good and not good. Basically, it's more concerned about the artworks and this theory is totally opposite to the artistic theory of Arthur Tanto. So this guy is the Arthur Tanto. So we learn in chapter 80. Okay, you can flip back to see again. All right. So you will find very interesting if you compare the artistic theory of these two guys. So one is concerned about the artworks 
One is concerned about the artist. All right. I think that's all for our presentation. I hope you will like it. So we see you again. Thank you. Bye bye.